Hi everyone, welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. I'm Nicole, I'm an artist, and today we are going to be making a ladybug. And not just any ladybug, a super fancy one. And I call it a fantasy ladybug because I can, and no beacon stop me. So I first did this design way back in 2016, and I recreated it through the years, but I stopped at 2018 and I have not made it since. So it's 2023, we're gonna give it another go. I'm gonna show you how I made it so you can make it for yourself as well. And then we can do a little comparison of my older versus my newer design. So the top left is going to be the first time I ever made this particular sculpture. I had just started sculpting and I was so proud of this design. And then I made it again as small little charms in 2016. They were absolutely adorable. Then in 2017, I added a little bit more detail. And then 2018, I just kind of refined it. So let's try again. We're gonna start with Sculpey Primo in bright green pearl. It's a lovely metallic shade. Always condition your polymer clay really well before you use it. We're gonna shape this into a teardrop shape, just the rough outline of a leaf. Now I'm just gonna score the edges so I know where I'm gonna cut. I'm using a glass tile. I'll put a link for it in the description. It's amazing to sculpt on. So here I'm just cutting those little leaflet shapes so we get those pretty little edges on our leaf. Now here I'm using almost like a pulling motion while also shaping the leaf while flattening it out as well. So you wanna pull, flatten, and shape. And it's just a combination of those over and over until you get the shape you like. Sometimes you need to go back in with your X-Acto and just continue to shape it just how you like it. Here I'm just creating a little bit of those leaf veins. It's all about the little details that make this look good. I'm also doing the back as well. I can flatten it out while I'm shaping it and get it exactly how I want. I put a little curve in my leaf to give it a little bit more realism. You don't want it too chunky and you don't want it too flat. Now we're gonna create what's called the midrib of a leaf. It's that big line that goes down the center. Now I'm gonna create almost a valley effect in this line. It's gonna give it a lot of dimension. So you can see I'm kind of separating it out like a little valley's running through our leaf. I'm gonna mark out where the veins of the leaf are and I'm gonna do that same effect. I also periodically turn it over so I can smooth out any areas on the back as well. Here you can see that valley shape I created and you wanna do that on the veins of the leaf as well. I'll put this tool below too. It came in a really great kit that I love to use. And I go in between all these areas and you can see it has a nice 3D effect to it now. Now we're going to make a snake of clay, as Ace of Clay likes to call them. That's what I always think of them now. After rolling out your stem, you're gonna wanna cut it. Don't worry too much about the length because you can always shorten it, but give yourself enough to do something creative with it. We're going to attach our stem I'm using that same tool that I used before along with my needle tool. And then I was just gonna try out different ways of putting my stem. And this is totally up to you. You might wanna play with it a little bit and figure out what looks good. I tried this one out, was not feeling it. How about this? Now we're getting somewhere, that's it. I'm going to make a small divot for my leaf stem to sit into nicely. This is going to help me attach it. I'm going to use some Sculpey Bacon Bond. 
This is great for attaching pieces to your clay so that they don't come apart or break. And you can see how the stem fits so nicely in there. And now it's nice and secure. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the top of my stem as well. This is where I realized I accidentally bought Sculpey 3. I recommend only using Primo. Sculpey 3 can be very breakable and brittle, and I just do not think it's good to use for most projects. I'm gonna condition it really well, and since it's all that I have, it's what I'm gonna work with. Here, I'm trying to just figure out how big I want my ladybug to be, and she was a big girl, so we're gonna make her a little smaller. There we go. That's the size I want. Now I'm going to make it into an oval type shape. See the flat bottom? That's gonna be where we put the legs. I always look at references, even for something as simple as a ladybug. Here you can see our shape that we want. I'm gonna be using this cutter to cut out a crescent shape out of the front of our ladybug. You can also use an X-Acto knife. We're gonna blunt those edges a little bit. You can use your fingers or the edge of a tool. I'm also pushing down a little bit on the front so it slopes down towards the head. Checking back on my reference. I'm using black in Sculpey Primo as well. Condition that up real nice. You can see here I transferred some of the red onto the black. So I use scrap clay and rub my hands around in it and it helps get off the red clay that was stuck to my fingers and any dust and debris. You can see it sticks right to your scrap clay. And I'm making almost like a little, it looks like a little coffee bean. There we go, little coffee bean. It's flattened out just slightly and you want to make sure it fits in that little half moon that we made. I really make sure it's attached very well though, and I'm going to make a second little bean. I'm going to flatten out the first one a little bit, and then attach that second one on and press it on really well. I contour it to fit the first black part that we made. Here's the profile we're looking for. Much more realistic ladybug. I'm blending in the bottom to it really nicely so that it doesn't come apart. And I check my reference again to look at those little tiny legs. Now it's time to make some itty bitty little ladybug legs. We're starting off with a little spaghetti noodle of clay making it really small, and I'm going to mark out the segments of the ladybug's legs. This is gonna make it look very realistic. And I roll my needle tool on the clay. It makes an indent that separates each segment of the leg. It's a little finicky to do with such small pieces, but it's worth the effort. Here you can see I attached the first leg. You're going to want to almost use your little leg joints like they're real and bend it at the joint and stick it on your ladybug. If you need to look at your reference to figure out where to place it, go ahead and do that. That's what I did. And I like to bend the ends of the legs away from their face. Look at how cute that looks. Looking like a ladybug. We're gonna repeat the process for the back two sets of legs. I made them just a little bit bigger than the front legs. I'm basically following the real anatomy almost exactly of a ladybug. Look at that tiny little leg. Bent it right at the joint, stick it on the bottom, and then position your legs. It gets a little crazy once you have six legs on there, but that's what it should look like. Now I put it on the glass tile and I pushed it down a little bit as well. Sorry, this footage is absolute junk. 
you're basically gonna make a little tiny mustache. Kind of like you're making a leg, but not, and you're gonna wanna stick it on the front of your ladybug and blend in the middle part. This is gonna be for the antenna. So blend in that middle part really well into the ladybug's face. And then I fold each antenna in on itself Fold the other side. And boom, we got an antenna. I push down a little bit on the top of them with my finger. Boop. And there we go, there's the little antenna. Now I'm gonna figure out where I want my ladybug to sit on my leaf. I made a little divot for my ladybug because I'm gonna be adding a bunch of baker bond and I just wanna make sure it had a space for all of that glue to sit. It's just some added insurance that it will stick really well. Just test fit it and there's our bacon bond, the forbidden frosting. I'm gonna coat the entire bottom of my ladybug's legs as well as put it on the leaf, just to make sure I get a nice bond. Gentle squishing. Now my legs weren't actually touching the leaf, so I had to go in with the shaper tool and just adhere them to the actual leaf. I'm going to use a ball stylus tool to create some indents for our water dew drops that we're gonna make later. I just put these wherever I felt they looked good. I decided to go with three and a little bit of different sizes. And of course, we're gonna make this extra special and extra sparkly with some crystals. We're gonna make a bezel for one of the crystals using this antique gold Sculpey. I'm just making a flat surface where my little piece of clay can sit. I'm just using a little ball of that antique gold and I press in with my stylus. And I made sure to make it big enough to fit my crystal really nicely, added some bacon bond, and press it right in there. I decided I wanted to add a little bead at the top as well. So I'm doing the same process. I'm just not gonna put a crystal inside of this one. You'll see what we do with it later. Now I'm making a little place for the crystal on the ladybug to sit. Again, adding some bacon bond and our crystal and making sure it's set in there really nicely. And there it is. Now I'm gonna be using some Perlex. It's basically like a mica powder and you can use it in crafts. It sticks to polymer clay really nicely. And I'm just filling those little divots that we made with the mica powder. And there we go. Now I'm gonna spice it up just a little bit more and we're gonna add some green mica powder to all the edges of our leaves and up the stem. And you can see how nice and shiny it makes it. I'm using some watered down acrylic paints in all of the veins of my leaves just to make it have a little bit more dimension and make them stand out a little bit more. I'm also going to use some Sculpey clay softener to smooth out any fingerprints, get off any dust or debris off of my ladybug. You do need to be a little careful with this because it can dissolve your clay a little bit and you can smear colors of clay together if you're not careful. There she is, and she's ready to go into the oven. I'll put info on how to bake polymer clay in the description. Here it is, all nice and baked. And here I am filling in that little resin bead that we made. We gotta take it to another level with some dragon glaze. I watered it down with a little bit of gloss. And we're gonna paint on a little bit of glimmer shimmer before we add our spots. 
I would start out with a little bit of glitter. You can always work your way up. I'm also mixing some regular glitter with some gloss polyurethane and painting in our little dew drops here. I'd like to thank my dog Jenny for her lovely dog hair in that shot. Awesome. Now I'm going to use some polyurethane varnish over where I added the mica powders. Regular polymer clay does not need a varnish of any kind. This is just to protect the mica powders that we added to the leaf. Now we're going to add the little white dots. Ooh, I was a little shaky on this first one. Scary. And that really added the cute factor. Now for the dots, you can look at references or just add them wherever you want. Now we have our spots. Then I'm going to add some gloss polyurethane over the top to protect the paint and give our ladybug a nice glossy shine. Now it's time to make our dew drops. I'm using UV resin here. Make sure you wear gloves and a respirator. I want it to be nice and three dimensional. I'm gonna flash cure them with my UV light. This one is actually a flashlight and then I will do a full cure in my UV lamp. I use a nail cure lamp. Add one more little dot to our little bead that we made. And I finished curing it in this lamp. Here's a look at the old designs. Here's the first time I ever made it in 2016. And here's what it looks like in 2023. 